Last week, we talked about the proper way to use the system file checker and DISM to repair corrupted system files. But what happens if your system is so corrupted that it won't boot at all? Well, today I'm gonna to show you how to use those same commands in the recovery environment. Stay tuned. Last week, I showed you the proper way to use the system file checker. We talked about also using DISM to repair the Windows image so the system file checker can do its job. However, sometimes systems are so damaged that they simply won't boot. And if that happens, you can't run the system file checker, obviously. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. But first, we gotta pay some bills. So here's a message from our sponsor. Is your copy of Windows 10 unactivated? Well, it doesn't have to be because with today's sponsor, VIP SCD Key, you can get a valid Windows 10 license for under $20. Stop dealing with that stupid watermark on the desktop, the valid license for Windows 10. Also, with an activated copy of Windows 10, you can upgrade to Windows 11 for free. Just go to the link in the description below and pick up a valid Windows 10 license key. During checkout, use the code CYBERCPU for a 25% discount. Once you have your key, go to your activation settings in Windows 10 and click on the link that says Change Product Key. Enter the product key you just purchased and hit Activate. Now you don't have to deal with that stupid watermark that come with running an unactivated copy of Windows 10. Now, on with the video. Now, before we start, there's a couple of things that we're going to need. In a perfect world, you can get your system booted into recovery, and if that's the case, then this should really be easy. However, if you can't get your system into recovery, this can also be done with any Windows PE install. You could use a Windows install USB or even a USB boot drive like Hiren's Boot CD. However, in this case, I highly recommend using a Windows install USB because there are some files on that USB that you're gonna need in this process. So let's get onto the computer and make a really quick Windows Boot CD. Let me show you how to do it. Okay, so to do this, the first thing you're gonna need is you're obviously going to need a USB drive. I have a USB drive plugged in right now that already has a Windows 10 install on it. So that's what I'm gonna be using for this video. But I'm gonna show you how to create your own. So in a circumstance like this, you'll already have one. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this and we're gonna open up our browser. And the first thing we wanna do is just go to Google and search for Windows 10 Media creation tool. And then the first link should be the right one, but right here, this one right here, it should be pretty easy. So go ahead and click on that. And you're going to want to scroll down to right where it says create Windows 10 installation media. So go ahead and click download now, and it'll download the tool. And then once the tool downloads, just go ahead and launch it. Hit yes, yes to the user account control. We can get rid of our browser now while that's starting. And it's gonna take a second for things to fire up. So I'll go ahead and skip ahead to the next step. Okay, so right here, go ahead and accept the agreement there. And it's gonna take a little bit longer to get a few things ready. This is gonna be a waiting process. And if your system's a little bit slower, then it's gonna take a little bit longer. But go ahead and be patient and we'll skip to the next step. All right, so. At the next step, what we wanna do is create the installation media USB flash drive or DVD right here. So go ahead and click on that and click next. And then from here, you can go ahead and leave all this default if you want, click next. And then we wanna go USB flash drive. And for that, we go ahead and hit the next key and it's gonna ask us which drive we wanna use. And we click on that drive and hit next. Now, of course, I'm not gonna do that because I've already created one for myself. But once you do that, it should get to the end and you can go ahead and hit finish and be done with it. Okay, now that you've created the USB drive, let's get this system booted up off of that USB drive so I can show you the next procedure of using the system file checker on an offline system. By offline, I mean not booted regularly into Windows. So to do that, you're gonna have to look at your motherboard manufacturer's documentation to find out how to boot off of a USB drive. But once you do that, I'll meet you in recovery mode. Okay, so here's the screen that you should see once you boot off of a Windows setup USB. However, we're not actually gonna set up Windows. We're just using this for our own purposes. So go ahead and hit next. And then from next, you don't wanna hit install now. You wanna click right here where it says repair your computer. So we're gonna click on that and it's gonna boot us into the recovery environment. But this is the recovery environment that's on our USB drive, not the one that's on our system, just in case there's something about the one on our system that's damaged. And then what we wanna do is click on troubleshoot. And then from troubleshoot, we wanna to go to the command prompt. 
And then from here, now we have the, the command prompt open. We need to find our drive letter for our primary hard drive. And for that, the first thing we're gonna try is C. And then go to C and go ahead and hit directory. And as you can see here, we got the Windows directory, the user directories, and I recognize this directory here, Cyber CPU, from my boot drive. So this is definitely the correct drive. However, we also need to determine what drive letter our USB drive is. So for that, I'm gonna go ahead and hit D. I'm gonna run a directory here. And as you can see on here, we've got setup exe and we have the sources directory here so i think this is the usb drive so we should be good here so i'm going to go back to our c drive and the first command that we're going to run is dism just to make sure that we have a good image to run sfc off of and to do that just type in dism space forward slash image colon c colon backslash, and this is telling us that the image that we're actually wanting to check is the one on our C drive. Obviously, we don't wanna check the one on our USB drive right now. So we're gonna go ahead and hit space. We're gonna hit forward slash, clean up, dash image, space, forward slash, restore health, space, and then we're gonna do another forward slash, and we're gonna tell it the source. So for this one, we're gonna try source colon C drive backslash windows. And then from here, we should be able to hit enter and it'll run the DISM tool. And it might take a minute and you might get this error about not having a scratch directory. Now, I have found that that really doesn't make much of a difference, but once it finishes here, I'll go ahead and show you how to set up a scratch directory just in case you don't wanna see the error or if the error does cause problems for you. And I'm gonna go ahead and skip ahead until the scan is finished. Okay, as you can see, it says the operation completed successfully. And like I said, the scratch directory option isn't that important, but in some cases it might be. So let me show you how to set a scratch directory. So the first thing that we wanna do is make sure that we have a directory on our C drive. And as you can see right here, we do have a temp directory. So I'm gonna remove that directory so I can show you how to create a new one. So now that I've removed it, I'm gonna go ahead and hit a directory. And as you can see, I don't have a temp folder anymore. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit MD for make directory space temp and that should make a temp directory and if we run a directory here real quick you can see that yep right there we have our temp directory so that's gonna be our scratch directory so to do this all you do is hit the up arrow to give us back the command that we did before so we don't have to type it all over again and then at the very end I'm gonna go ahead and hit space I'm gonna hit a forward slash and I'm gonna type in scratch dir colon, and then you want a path to your scratch directory. So that's gonna be C colon backslash temp, just like that. And then once we hit enter, it'll go ahead and run DISM again. And as you can see, we no longer have that arrow. So if this works for you, then great. It should be able to use Windows Update to be able to download any corrupted files that it might have to repair the Windows image. However, if you're in a situation where you don't have internet or for whatever reason it doesn't work the way that you want to and you want to specify where the source image is at, let me show you how to do that. Okay, so if we want to specify an alternative image for DISM to use to rebuild the Windows image, we're going to actually use the one that's on the USB drive that's on the system. So we're going to go into the D drive since we've already determined that that's the USB. And then we want to go into the sources directory right here. So what we do is we just type CD sources and then run a directory here. This is gonna be a super long directory, but all we really wanna do is go ahead and scroll through here until you find your, right here, your install ESD file. Now it's either gonna be install ESD or install WIM. So depending on which one it is, is gonna be real important for the next step. And to help find it, just make sure that it's definitely gonna be the biggest file inside of this folder. So once you find it and you determine whether yours is install ESD or install WIM, we can move on to the next step. And to do that, we're gonna go ahead and hit our up arrow so we can get our command back right here. And then what we wanna change is right here where it says source C windows. Obviously we want this source to be that file that I just showed you. So to do that, we're just gonna go ahead and back up right here and we're gonna delete C windows from here and we're gonna type in D colon backslash sources backslash 
install.esd. And then from there, we're gonna go ahead and hit enter, and it's going to use the ESD image that we just specified in order to rebuild the Windows image. So it's gonna take a second to finish, but once it does, we'll move on to the next step. And here we are, we're at the next step now. So now that we've ran DISM and we know we have a good image, now we can actually run SFC. So to run SFC, you just type in SFC, and then you would go forward slash, scan now, space, and typically you would just hit enter at this point and it would run. However, we are in an offline operating system and we don't wanna run SFC on the recovery install, we wanna run it on the offline install that's on our C drive. So to do that, we have to make sure to tell it where the offline drive is. So to do that, we're gonna go ahead and hit forward slash, off boot dir equals and then from here we want to specify the drive letter itself so we already know the drive letter is c so then we're going to hit space again we're going to hit forward slash again and we want to type off win dir equals and we want to specify the windows directory on the offline operating system so for that it's going to be c colon backslash windows just like that. And now we can hit enter, and it'll go ahead and run SFC on the offline operating system. Now, as you can see, it's not giving you a progress bar, and this might take a second, but once it finishes, it should tell us if there was any errors in the process. Okay, it finished up and it said Windows Resource Protection did not find any integrity violations. And the reason why is because I've ran SFC on this drive several times in preparing for this video. However, if you had any problems, it'll tell you that it did find corruption and it fixed the problem. If for whatever reason it was unable to fix it, it'll tell you that also. So. Hopefully it doesn't give you any more problems, but now to get out of this recovery environment and get back into Windows, go ahead and click the little red X right here, and that will bring you back into your regular menu. And at this point, you just click continue to Windows 10, and it should boot it back into Windows 10. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. So as you can see, the system file checker is a really powerful tool, and it can fix a lot of problems with Windows. As I stated in the last video, I wanna to put together a series of different how-tos that will help you to fix broken installs of Windows. Because honestly, I think too many people just reload Windows when they really don't have to. It's almost never necessary to reload Windows anymore like it used to be. With a little bit of knowledge and a few fairly easy to use tools that come built into Windows, you can fix most problems that would cause many people to just give up and reload Windows. Unfortunately, there are a few circumstances that will require you to reload Windows. One of those would be if you want to downgrade from Windows 11 back to Windows 10 after the 10 day downgrade window. Fortunately though, I made a video showing you how to do that without losing your programs and data. You can check that video out here. I also did a sequel to that video that shows you how to do the same thing for free, but it's just not as thorough as that one is. So. As always, you guys have a great day.